Hi, welcome to lecture 5.1. Today we're going to talk about translational kinematics. This is going to concern primarily the velocity and acceleration of points when we observe their change in time from a given reference frame. So let me switch over to my tablet. Um, so translational kinematics is going to be the broad topic and I'll break it up into first velocity and uh, acceleration. And I need to spell today correctly. All right. so we've already went over angular velocity and angular acceleration and now we will tackle these topics. Okay, so starting with the velocity, we're going to define the velocity of a point P in reference frame A, and that means that we're looking at how it changes when viewed from A, this point P, and we define that velocity as the time derivative in A of a vector to P from some point O, where O is fixed in A. All right. So just to write that out, so we're interested in how the position change changes. Um, when it's observed from reference frame A. Okay, and then O has to be a point that's fixed in A. And then we can also say that uh, the velocity is the time rate of change of that position vector. And P is not fixed in A. All right, so taking that uh, basic definition, um, we already know that we can use, um, we can rewrite derivatives of vectors and frames in different ways, and we've done that with angular velocities, and we know from the angular velocity section that we can rewrite um, the derivative of a vector in terms of the angular velocity uh, and a cross product with that vector. So if you recall, we can actually write the velocity of P and A as the time derivative of R of P with respect to O, DT in reference frame B plus the cross product of omega of B in A crossed with R P O, right? So we can take any vector, which we uh, have here, this R P of O, and we can rewrite it like this using the theorems that we showed in the angular velocity chapter. All right, so that'll let us uh, think about uh, things uh, in helpful ways. So let's say I've got a reference frame A here. That's a x and a y. We're just going to look at a, a, a planar system here, and then I've got a a disk that we'll call B, 
I'm gonna use a different color. Uh, and B is going to have a BX and a BY fixed to it. And then we're gonna label a couple of points. I'll have a, a point here, O. And O is gonna be fixed in A as well as B. And then I'll put a P point P here. Okay. Oops, sorry, I didn't want to put point P there. I want to put point P here. Right. So then uh, I'm going to use a angle here. I'll call that Q1. And then the distance along this BX direction we'll call Q2 from O to P. And both Q1 and Q2 are time varying variables. And oh, where did I label that B? Okay, so we've got this basic uh, thing here. If I want to then calculate the velocity of P in A, then uh, we can do that. So we know that um, O is fixed in A, so we can apply our new formula here. So we need to know the first the first term. So what is the time derivative in B of R B O D T? Well, that would be Q2 dot in the BX direction. Right? If we stand on the disk B, and I've forgotten one thing here, which this disk has some angular velocity omega b in a. Okay, so we stand on the disk, we look at this vector from o to p, then the time, time derivative of the q2 dot in the bx direction will give us that first term. In the second term, we have omega b in a crossed with r p o to p. All right, so omega of b and a is out of the board. So right hand rule, I cross into the vector from O to P, and then I will get um, a term here that is um, Q1 dot times Q2. Uh, let me write out the components. Q1 dot, right, um, in the we can call it the BZ direction. And then we're going to cross that with this uh, Q2, right, the distance there in the BX. And if we take that cross product, Z into BX, we're going to get a BY. And then the magnitude would be Q1 dot Q2 BY. So we see then we have um, for this point that's uh, sliding only along this uh, dotted line, the VX direction, we get these two components of velocity here. Right? And this one is normal to uh, the VX um, axis. And then we get another term in the VX direction there. Okay. So that's a basic um, calculation of velocity for a simple system. And let's take a look at uh, back at the kinetic sculpture example. So I have that figure here. And let me just grab it and move it down to that next page. I'll copy. I think copied. And then I'll paste here, slide it over. All right, so we've got this figure here, and um, I want to uh, then have a look at some specific points. We know that O and P are fixed in the end frame, so they're not that interesting. Uh, but um, how about S? 
s is not fixed in the end frame. So let's try to calculate the velocity of s, but in the end frame. So we can write out our theorem here. I can, uh, we have this intermediate frame a, right? That's useful. So if I rewrite this as uh, time derivative of a of s uh, p to s plus omega of a and n crossed with that vector from p to s. Right. Well, in this case, um, if d this distance from p to s is constant, then when I'm standing in a, looking at that vector, it does not change. So that nicely goes to zero in this case. And then we only have the remaining term. And then we know that uh, the omega of a in n is alpha dot. It's a simple rotation about a z. And then if we cross that with the vector from r, uh, sorry, for p to s, that's actually negative d in the a x direction. Taking that cross product of a z into the negative x will get us a negative y direction. So we get a negative alpha dot d a y. Okay, so that's the velocity of s and n, and it only has that uh, cross product term because d is constant there. All right. So that's pretty pretty straightforward. There's a couple other theorems though in velocity that uh, become uh, nicely useful. So let's introduce those. The first one is the velocity a two-point theorem is what we'll call it. All right. So this is very nice if you know that two points, and we'll say P and Q, are fixed in some rotating reference frame B. So if I uh, start off, let's have a, let's make us a 3D um, reference frame here called A. Okay, and we'll have a x, a y, and a z. And then if I have this rigid body potato, okay, and we'll learn more what the, a rigid body is, but I'm going to make some object here, and then we will affix a uh, reference frame B to it. Oops. So this is going to be reference frame B. Okay, this thing is rotating um, relative to A in some way. And I'll just put a, uh, a big green vector here that represents the omega B and A. So it has some arbitrary angular velocity when viewed from A, right? And on this uh, potato here, that is this reference frame P, we're gonna have two points, and those two points are gonna be both fixed in reference frame B. Okay, so we we'll have P and Q, right? And then I'm also gonna add a point here that's fixed in A called O. All right, so O is fixed in A, P and Q are fixed in B, B has an angular velocity, 
um, with respect to A, right? So we are going to be interested in calculating, and I guess I'll just do those in red, um, the velocity of Q in A, right? So this unit, this vector here, not a unit vector, this if I take the um, time derivative of this vector in A, R of Q with respect to O, then I'd get my answer. And we can do that, but let's say for example that we already know the velocity of P in A, Okay, so this vector, maybe it was easier to calculate. Um, maybe we already have that velocity for, for whatever reason. And uh, we also know the vector between these two points. Q with respect to P. All right, so I can break up this uh, vector we're interested in taking the derivative of into these two component vectors. All right, and if I do so, then we can uh, think about the velocity of Q in A. All right, and that's going to be the time derivative of R of Q with respect to O in A dt. But we know that the sum of these two vectors equals the other one, so we can then uh, write that instead. So we can write from P, from O to P, dt, plus the time derivative of R, P to Q, also in A. All right. So we'll say then that the velocity of Q and A equals this first one, because O is fixed in A, is simply the velocity of P and A. And we have mentioned already that we, for whatever reason, might have this velocity already. And then we have this second one. And because the vector R of P to Q is fixed in V, right? It does not change. Um, if we rewrite this in terms of the B frame, this derivative, it's going to be a bit more useful. So if I write B D R Q P T T plus, we can always then use omega of A and B crossed that vector, All right? So we know that when standing on B, R of P to Q does not change. So that nicely goes to zero, and then we end up with this two-point theorem. So this is nice, right? If I know the velocity of some point in a, that's fixed in a reference frame, and I want to know the velocity of another point, Q in this case, also fixed in that same reference frame. If I know the angular velocity of B and A, and the velocity of P and A, then I can formulate and get that velocity of that new point, Q. And this means, too, that I can find the velocity. If I know the velocity of P and A, I can, and omega of B and A, I can find the velocity of any point in this reference frame B uh, by applying this theorem. So it's pretty handy I, um, and useful. Um, and it's particularly useful in uh, sort of bodies that are joined by um, a collection of simple joints, and we'll talk more about bodies and joints later, but
So for example, if uh, we have some chain of bodies like so, and, and say these are just in the plane and they're all oops, didn't mean to erase, connected by these little uh, sort of pin joints. All right, then we have uh, all these reference frames that we can construct. Here, uh, and then we have these points, P, Q, R, S, T, U, right? Uh, in this case, if we know the angular velocities of these bodies and we start with P, we can sort of walk the chain using this two-point theorem to get the velocities of each of the subsequent points. So that becomes quite nice and useful. And we'll use that later in the course in many cases. All right, uh, I think I'll make a new page. So let's uh, come back to the kinetic sculpture again. And I might as well grab the picture. Paste it here. Okay. Oops. Funny. Oh, we'll go there. All right. So um, we have found the velocity of point S already here, and the point S is fixed on this body B or this reference frame B, this plate, and there's some other points of interest. Um, let's try to get this point Q, given that we already have calculated the velocity of point S with our prior um, equation. So I'm going to bring back the two-point theorem. We're going to write, I'm interested in Q and N. So if I know the velocity of S and N, then I can add omega of b and n crossed with the vector from s to q. Right. So this is the two-point theorem. It's going to let us calculate the velocity of q in the main reference frame n here, given that we've already calculated the velocity of point s. So what are these components. Well, the velocity of point S and N we've already calculated. We can just write that down. Um, omega of B and N, well, that's two pieces, right? We have this uh, alpha dot in the AZ. Right? That's omega of B and N plus uh, omega of B and A. And that's beta dot about the I'll do ax. It's also mx. Right. So it has those two components, and then um, r from s to q. So if I want to travel uh, from s to q, I need to um, move over in the negative bx direction, w. So negative w bx will take me over here. And then the distance from here to here, well, um, in the problem definition, uh, this mass center is at the center of the plate, so that's L over 2. So I get C plus L over 2 in the negative b direction. C plus L over 2 in the b z direction. Right. So if we combine all those pieces, I'll do that down here. The velocity of Q and N equals negative D alpha dot AY plus 
alpha dot a z plus beta dot a x crossed with negative b negative w b x minus c plus l over two b z. All right. Um, we could probably do that by hand uh, to work this out, um, but it's much nicer to do that in SimPy. So let's just jump over there and we'll see what that result looks like. Oops. So, new notebook. Call this translation and do our favorite imports here. Okay, that should get us set up. We've got a few reference frames. I'll do in a b equals uh, sm dot symbols in a b class equals me dot reference frame and then let's uh, introduce some variables we need um, alpha and beta and then um, those are going to be time varying so alpha beta and then we're going to need uh, a few others, D, W, C, L. I think that'll take care of it. And these we can just do non-time varying symbols. Right. Okay, so I think that's enough. Let's set up our, our simple rotations. So A dot orient axis with respect to in we're going to go through the angle alpha and this is about the z and then b dot orient axis with respect to a this is through beta and that is about the a x right a x all right so we have our two simple rotations and if we um, we've already calculated this velocity of s and n so i will just write that like so so we got negative d times alpha diff and if i just do diff without the t and there's only a, it's only a function of one variable it will be the diff different uh, the uh, derivative with respect to t and then finally that's in the a dot y Let's print that to make sure it looks like we expect. So that was our previous result. Um, omega of b and n. Uh, recall that uh, we did the summation of um, a dot angular velocity n. n is the first piece. Okay. If we sum that with a dot angular velocity um, sorry b dot angular velocity we can get those two components which I match what we have there on the left in our hand notes and <laughs> excuse me if I just do b angular velocity and then I'll also get that. So we want to cross that with this vector. So I'll say um, r from uh, s to q equals negative w times the b x direction minus c plus l over two uh, times the b c direction. All right, 
Okay, to get the entire velocity, so we'll have in v q equals in v s plus v dot angular velocity in in, and then I can do cross r r s to q, and that should give us the expected velocity. There we are. So that's uh, expressed in the B-frame uh, and one component in the A-frame there. And you can then, this is just a vector, right? we can express it in any frame we want. If I express it in N, it's a pretty nasty equation. Um, if we express it all in B, A little better. Um, and then I show this in the notes too, right? We just did this calculation manually, but there are um, uh, useful um, things that we have already. So if I, uh, useful methods that we have available. So what I want to do is create some points. So I'm going to do S and we're also going to need Q, just S and Q, I believe, it's going to be sufficient. And then if I do S and Q, SM dot symbols, capital S, capital Q, and then here I'm going to do class equals ME dot point. We should get some points. And then I want to set up the Q dot position from S is going to be this vector R, S, Q. takes two positional arguments, but three we're giving, oh, I need to do set position, not position from, set position, let's pick an S, we give it that vector. And then if I try uh, Q dot position from S, it should return that vector. Uh, the other thing is we're gonna set explicitly the velocity in N, and we've already have that there. So you would have need to establish this, that's in VS. And if I say S velocity and N, it should return that expression, looks good. Now that I have uh, everything available, um, I can say Q dot V two point theory. And let's check the documentation, I always have to do that on there, but it takes the other point that's going to be S in our case. Um, and then there's out frame and fixed frame. So fixed frame is the one that both of the points are fixed in. And the outer frame is the one that you want the derivative in. So that's going to be in, and then that's going to be B. So then I'll, the second point is S, and then we want the derivative with respect to the frame in. And then they're both fixed in body B. And if we have all the pieces right, um, I should get the same answer as we manually calculated before. Okay, so once you know how this works, what you're calculating, you can use this effectively. All right, so that's the velocity two-point theorem. And let's jump back just to the tablet. I will make a new page. Um, the next theorem is the velocity one-point theorem. So this is um, when Q is moving in B, whereas before Q is fixed in B, okay? Right. So similar diagram. Um, let me sketch that out real quick. Actually, I could just steal it from above. Let's take this same diagram. Copy. 
copy and paste. All right, so same diagram here, and we have this point Q, but now Q can be changing in the reference frame B. So this derivative of this term is not going to be as simple, All right? So Q will be moving relative to R, I'm sorry, relative to P, and I'll indicate that with uh, sort of a path that Q is following, so, oops. So Q then is maybe moving along some path there in this body B, right? So we're gonna get a little bit more complicated scenario. Um, so let's write then this velocity of Q and A like we did before and write the two components out. We're going to use these two pieces of the vector instead. So we'll get R, P, O, D, T, plus D, A, R, from P to Q, D, T. Okay. Uh, the first one is similar. That's the velocity of P and A. Same as before, no problem. But the second one, right, we have this time varying r. Okay, so if we then rewrite this with respect to frame b, we then have to think about that term. And I can also then write omega of b and a crossed with r q to p. So last time this term went to zero, but this time it doesn't. So then we are left with the velocity of Q in reference frame B, right? Because P is fixed in B in this case. So then we just have the simple velocity of Q when viewed from B plus the same term as before. So when Q can move in B, but P is fixed in B, then we have to apply this one point theorem there. All right, I think we can, let's take a look at the kinetic sculpture again. And let's grab the original figure. And I think it'll fit right here. All right. So in this case, um, we want a, uh, some point that happens to be moving in the reference frame. So I have our friendly pigeon here that's trying to walk on top of this uh, magnificent kinetic sculpture. And um, I am going to say that this um, pigeon, let me get the gray, this pigeon will be traveling along that top edge. And we're going to say that there is a small s uh, time varying variable. And I'll just put S of T, so we, we remember that. Time varying variable that will locate where the pigeon is walking um, along the top edge here. All right, so R is gonna be a Q here. It's moving when we are standing on reference frame B, looking at the pigeon, they're moving back and forth on the top of this thing, and we track them with that variable S there, right? So we can apply our um, theorem to this. We know the velocity of s in n, okay? And, um, but I'm going to 
uh, just so it's easier to work it on paper to demonstrate. Um, let's calculate the velocity of the pigeon in A, in the reference frame A. Okay, so let's say we want the velocity of the pigeon R in reference frame A. So then I know the velocity of S and A, for example. Oops. Already. So then I would need to add the relative velocity here of R in reference frame B. Right, that's that term. And then we add this cross product term. It's going to be omega of B in A cross with the vector from S to R. Right. So this is uh, for our pigeon. All right, the velocity of S and A is pretty simple. S is actually fixed in A, so that's going to go to zero. And then we need these other terms. So the velocity of R when viewed from B, if I'm standing on B, the pigeon is moving in the positive X direction. So we're going to say that's S dot in the positive B X direction there. And then we have omega of B and A. And that's beta dot. And I will write it in terms of the um, Bx, the same as Ax, so we can write beta dot Bx, and then R from S to R. Um, we travel in the negative Bx over W and then minus S, so we'll do negative in the Bx, W, and then uh, minus s, and be a positive s and a negative w, and then be x, and we need to travel uh, in the bz direction there. So this distance is l over 2 minus c would give us this distance. l over 2 minus c in the, the Z direction. I think I've got that right, hopefully. Yep. Okay. So, writing that all out. And I'm running out of room. The velocity of our pigeon R in reference frame A is then going to be S dot BX plus beta dot BX crossed with this vector and I'll simplify that a little S minus W BX plus L over 2 minus C BZ. All right, so that is applying the one-point theorem. We've got this uh, cross product to take, and let's jump back to SymPy to do the hard work for us. Also. Okay, so we um, are going to need a new point, and uh, but first, let's just get the vector. I think we can write that from uh, S to R. And that's going to be um, S. Oh, yeah. We're going to need some new variables. What do, what do we already have defined? We need S as a dynamic symbol. And I think that's all. So let's get S equals ME dynamic symbols S. Now, uh, let's do a vector from S to R, and that is going to be S minus W times the BX plus L over 2 minus C 
times PZ. All right, I think that was good. And then we have this uh, velocity of R and B is um, S diff times PX. Right, and then our omega a and b is just going to be b and velocity oops, in uh, a. Right. So finally, we can write uh, the velocity in a of r equals our b v r plus our b dot angular velocity. In A, and then I'll, uh, I'll write it like this in A dot cross uh, with our R S to R, and then we'll look at that velocity and see. There we go. So uh, that simplifies reasonably well and um, expresses nicely in B. We've got this uh, component uh, in the B Y direction, which is normal to the plate. And then we also have this component because the pigeon is moving when viewed from plate, and you can sometimes call that uh, rel the relative velocity. Okay, so those are the two primary uh, velocity theorems. And uh, let's now move to acceleration of the point. So, so we're going to need to calculate accelerations um, to reach our final goal of the equations of motion of a multi-body system. So this will be important. So let's define the velocity, I'm sorry, the acceleration of point P when observed from reference frame A as the time derivative in A of the velocity of P when observed from A dt. So simple definition of velocity, you can take this time derivative once you have this vector and, um, and go to town. But uh, there are, we can also apply the same two theorems uh, and expand those for acceleration uh, to help calculate the accelerations, uh, often in a somewhat simpler form than just taking this uh, derivative directly. So we'll start with the acceleration uh, two point theorem. Okay, so let's write down our two point theorem in velocity, and we're just going to take the time derivative of it and see what we end up with. Okay, so recall in this case that Q and P are fixed in B. All right, so this applies only for that case. And let's just take this derivative then. So I'll do the derivative. This is what we're after to get our acceleration. And then we'll take the rid of each component here. We have a cross product, so we need to apply the product rule for our derivative.
Okay. This first term, the time derivative velocity of p in a, if we take the time derivative in a, then we can just say this is the acceleration of p in a. And, and once again, maybe we know this or have calculated, or it's easier to calculate, and then we can use that to help us get to the acceleration of q in a that we are after. Right. This term, right, this piece here, um, time derivative of omega of b and a, right, is just going to be the angular acceleration of b and a, crossed with that vector from p to q. Okay. And then this last term, we can rewrite this, okay, so this vector from P to Q is fixed in B. So since it's fixed in B, we can actually rewrite this using our angular velocity theorems and taking the time derivatives of vectors uh, as this. All right. So this may look familiar. We have this uh, acceleration of P and A. This term is the tangential acceleration term. And it's always tangent to the vector RQP. And then this term, this omega crossed omega crossed r, is the centripetal acceleration term. Acceleration. And that's this acceleration. You feel this when you're uh, you know, spinning in an object on a merry-go-round or a, a spinning uh, a carnival ride um, that pushes you against the, tries to throw you out away from. Um, and this is going to always be um, parallel to the uh, radial direction of whatever the curvature of this this path is. All right. Okay. It's interesting. So let's think about a, a simple example here. It is akin to this merry-go-round idea. So I'll uh, give us a reference frame A. All right. And then I'm going to have a disk. I'll make that black instead. I'm going to have a disk that's rotating in A, again, similar to what we've already looked at. So omega of B in A, and then we'll call this B. Actually, let me move that. There we go, B. Okay, and then I'm going to have uh, Bx and By. All right, in our case, the, the two points were P and Q. And I'm going to make the center of this disk P, and we're going to call that fixed in A and fixed in B. And then I'm going to put Q here on the edge of that. The If we apply this uh, two-point theorem in acceleration, both P and Q are fixed in B. P is also fixed in A. So I can apply this. First, we have the acceleration of P and A. Well, P is fixed in A in this case. So uh, that first term is going to be 0. but the second two terms will not be. So the um, we have this vector, r 
uh, some P to Q and we have to cross alpha with our P to Q. So alpha in our case, if this is a planar disk rotating, is out of the page. And if I cross uh, into this vector R Q to P, which is along BX, then I'm gonna get a tangential acceleration term in the BY direction. So this is our alpha B A crossed R from P to Q. And then we, all, we have this term. So first, if I cross omega, which is also out of the page with R P to Q, I get this B Y direction vector. And then if I cross uh, the vector pointing out of the page with b y, I get a negative b x direction. So then we end up with a centripetal x, um, acceleration term that points in uh, in the opposite direction of r q to p. Now it go the centripetal acceleration term points in. So this is our centripetal. All right. So, if you're standing at Q, um, if the acceleration, if the I'm sorry, if the angular velocity is constant, the green one would go to zero, and you would only feel this um, centripetal acceleration term. All right. So that uh, um, acceleration is term ter is present even if omega is constant. Right. It doesn't depend on alpha. But uh, if uh, omega is not constant, then you'll get a combination. The total acceleration vector in this case for us, I don't think I ever used this bright green, but uh, if I sum them, then you would get some kind of total acceleration vector. I'm going to make that solid. That looks like this. All right. So that's the total acceleration vector in this case, where P is fixed in A. And of course, if P is also moving, well, we have to incorporate that acceleration there, and then you would get even uh, uh, another component added to that that could be in an arbitrary direction. All right, so that's what I'm going to say about the acceleration two-point theorem. And in the last portion is we're going to see what the uh, acceleration one-point theorem looks like. And I, I'm not showing that here, but I did in the notes. There's uh, the A two-point theory uh, command that you can use, and, I, and, and also a A one-point theory command that you can use. So check the notes on that. I did. I should have shown that on the prior one, but uh, I think we're okay. You can calculate them manually. Acceleration one-point theorem, all right? So recall, this means that Q is moving in some reference frame B, which is rotating in A, and then P is fixed in B. We can come back to remind ourselves of the diagram, right? Here we have Q moving in B, P fixed in B, and we know the velocity of P and A, and also potentially the acceleration of P and A. And then we want to figure out, well, how do, what's Q? All right, so we start with our prior velocity equation, and we take its derivative to see what it looks like in acceleration land. Oops. So we have that relative velocity term here in the end, and then we've got this uh, piece 
that comes from uh, when the if the if the two points were fixed, right? But anyways, this is the one point velocity theorem. Let's take its derivative. Um, all right, so we've got a number of terms here. D V P in A A D T. And then we've got to apply the product rule just like we did before. And then we need to take the derivative of uh, this velocity vector, which we have room for, in A. Right? And this is V, Q, uh, and B, right? V, Q, and B, D, T. So this first term, right, we've already seen that before. We can just say that's the acceleration of P and A. And then similar to before, we have some similar looking terms. We've got the uh, alpha of B and A crossed with R from P to Q. And then uh, plus, this is going to be that omega A crossed. But it's not as simple as last time. This vector P uh, to Q now changes in time, right? Before it was fixed, so we could uh, make a nice simplification. But now that it's uh, not fixed, we have to include both the terms if we want to write this in terms of the B frame. So we first do B, D, R, Q, P, D, T, right? Plus omega of B and A crossed with that vector R Q P yeah okay and then let me move the move this a bit this last term, we've, we're taking, we have this velocity of q when viewed from b, and then we're taking the derivative of that when viewed from a. So we can expand um, that. Right? This is just a vector, so I can apply the same reasoning if I want b d t of q v d t. Then I have to add omega b and a crossed with that vector. Q, B. All right, so I'm getting a little nasty, a little hairier. Um, and remember, this is A, Q, and A that we're after. All right, let's just copy these first terms. This. All right, we've got across this and then across that. This though, right? We know that R P to Q changes in B. So this actually is an omega B and A crossed with this first term is just V of Q and B because P is fixed in B. And then we have this trip, this double cross product. Um, that looks like that, which is familiar. All right, that's from here. And um, this we can just write as the velocity of um, Q, I'm sorry, the acceleration of Q in, in B, right? So that is the acceleration of Q when the change is observed from B. And then we don't do anything with that.
All right, so what do we notice here? One thing we notice, we see a few familiar things. We've seen this, we've seen this before, tangential acceleration, right? We've seen this before, centripetal acceleration. We've got this new sort of relative velocity term of Q when viewed from the reference ring B. And then we've got these two pieces, which actually come out uh, to be the same. So this and this is two times omega of b and a crossed with a velocity vector of q and b, right? So this is basically where we want to get to. This is our theorem. And I think I'll just write it out for the sake of being a little, to being clear here. So the velocity of this point Q moving in B when we want to take, uh, I'm sorry, the acceleration of Q uh, in A when Q is moving in B, and we know B is rotating in A. Um, I'm going to group things like so. And then let's take the uh, centripetal term. Right. And then I'll add this relative acceleration term and the R2 mega cross VQB. Okay, so this, right, looks like the two-point theorem, and it is. So that's basically the acceleration portion if, if Q is assumed not to be moving, right? But Q is moving in B, so we have to add these two terms. So we get these two terms. This one makes sense. Okay, yeah, let's just add the acceleration of Q and B. Right, that's, a, that's a, a relative acceleration. But where the heck does this term come from? Well, this term you've probably seen in a priority at dynamics class too. Right, this omega cross V of Q and B. This is the Coriolis acceleration. Coriolis acceleration. And it's this funny acceleration term. Uh, if I can spell acceleration that occurs, and you can see that it's going to be normal to the velocity of Q when viewed from B, right? Because we've got this cross product, um, and it'll be normal to both of these vectors. So um, if you're moving along on this rotating body, you're going to get these um, forces that are potentially um, pulling you in funny directions that are normal to your velocity path. And then they will be uh, dependent on the angular velocity of the body, right? So that's the Coriolis acceleration term. And uh, um, this is this big nasty, and as my, I wrote this in the notes, my old uh, dynamics professor called this like, the five term beast. So one, two, three, four, five terms with a lot of subscripts that you have to pay very close attention to to sure, ensure that you get the right uh, results. Okay, so let's apply this uh, to our sort of our little rotating merry-go-ground merry since that's a little simpler and it can uh, let us think about a couple of the terms, some of these terms um, more simply if we think about this planar rotation. So again, I'll bring in our merry-go-round, right? That's gonna be B and I'll give a BX and a BY here and we'll call this B and it's gonna have an angular velocity, 
and then get acceleration potentially but let's just start with this all right and then now I'll have point P and this point B is going to be fixed in A to make it a little simpler for us and fixed in B and then I'll have point Q that uh, only moves along this uh, B X direction here let me write B X Oops. B Y A X A Y okay and we've got point Q and right I called uh, this Q1 and then this distance here which is is time varying Q2 okay so Q can now slide across this BX line and uh, so Q is moving in B in that case but it only moves in this linear direction so um, we have all these potential terms that we have to figure out here right um, let's assume well I'm gonna do them all so I'm gonna write over here a point that represents Q so that we can add some vectors to it so we already know um, acceleration of P and A is zero because P is fixed in A so we don't have to write that term uh, but we do have um, the tangential and the uh, centripetal accelerations so we know that the tangential would be this direction and the centripetal would be that direction so we've already done those in the prior problem uh, no problem let's uh, and I'll just label them so that I, oops tangential and centripetal but what are these other two terms like well if I stand on B and I view Q it's going to have a Q2 dot in the B X direction and a Q2 double dot in the B X direction for its acceleration right it only going to go along this line here so that term is not too bad I'll make that a green vector it's going to be something like this and this is a Q2 double dot in the BX direction there and that's this A of Q when viewed from B right again I forgot Oop. so that's that term the Coriolis term right so Omega is out of the board our velocity is in the BX direction so if I cross Omega into that BX direction then I get this extra sideways in the same direction as the tangential in this case um, term and that's going to be our Coriolis for our merry-go-round so this is that 2 omega b and a crossed with vq and b which is also in the b direction bx direction so if you if this thing is spinning right and you walk outward along the bx direction and you get this extra coriolis acceleration term to this, excuse me to the side it's a funny term hard to imagine not really that intuitive uh, but it's there and we have to account for it and it, and it uh, arises from this time derivative that we just just took okay so that's uh, the basic idea here we've got all five of these terms that you have to account for 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 the general acceleration of a moving point in somebody here and if we write it in this way we can break it down into the tangential centripetal Coriolis relative and then this 
uh, term of the point um, P that we know. Alrighty, so the last thing I want to do is let's go back to the kinetic sculpture and then we can try to calculate the acceleration of the pigeon right, when this thing is moving. So we have to apply that five term piece and what would that look like? That was point R, so if I write this out, A and R, and let's take, let's, uh, to keep it simple, um, and I do the more complicated one in the notes, but we'll do R when viewed from A. All right, so A is that, uh, uh, instead of N, um, we'll only have one omega to worry about. And then I can write um, this point S, which we already know the velocity, uh, the, sorry, the acceleration of an A plus the angular acceleration of B and A crossed with this vector from S to R, right? R is the pigeon, S is the point we already know, plus omega of B and A crossed with omega of B and A crossed with R of S to R, plus this Coriolis term, omega B and A crossed with, here we have the velocity of the pigeon R when viewed from B, and then plus this relative acceleration term of R when viewed from B. So that's the equation we're going to work out in SimPy for the last part of this lesson. So let's have a look over here. Jupiter. Uh, do we have all the terms we need? I think we have all the terms already defined, so we just need to uh, create some of these pieces. So the acceleration of S and A, and let's have a look at, I should bring the pigeon picture down so we can look at it inside it. Mm. Copy. All right, so actually I'm not going to fit on the page. Let's put that on a new page, paste, and drag it down a little. Huh. And then I'm going to move this. All right, so now we can see things. Yep. All righty. So back over here to Jupiter, the acceleration of A, sorry, acceleration of S when viewed from A is zero. So we don't have to worry about that term. Uh, but we do want the angular acceleration of B and A crossed with R from uh, S R S to R. So we'll do B dot angular acceleration in A. And then I'll give me a cross with, we had that R of S to R. Right? So that's going to be our tangential term. And then we need to do this other uh, centripetal term, which will be me dot cross b dot ang velocity in a, um, and we got two cross products, right? So the me dot cross inside here. Uh, oops, that's not where I wanted it. Cross of a cross here, a b. Keyboard, beta ang 
velocity in a, and then the same vector r, s r. All right, I close my last parenthesis. Yes, that is the centripetal term, All right? And then we're going to have a two times uh, b dot ing. Okay, this is going to be a cross product, so let's go ahead and do that. Cross uh, b dot angular of velocity in a crossed with. Now we need this velocity of r and b, which we haven't defined yet, I don't think. Velocity of, no, we did. We already have it. b, v, r. So this term is the Coriolis term. Why is that zero? v, v, r s dot bx so uh, omega is in the bx ah it's zero in this case right because the pigeon is walking along the um axis of rotation there essentially so pigeon is moving in bx if i cross uh, bx the angular velocity is also in bx so i get zero okay um no problem it happens to be zero in this case if the pigeon was walking uh, n normal to the that axis of rotation and we look at an a then it wouldn't wouldn't be zero right so um, that's our Coriolis term in this case uh, in the notes when I do this I do it with respect to n so you do get a you do, do get a proper Coriolis term and finally we need the acceleration of R and B so that is, if I just take the derivative, um, and I need t to do that, but uh, let's get t so I can. So I'm gonna, we always wanna grab t like this uh, so that um, we're using the same t that all the internal machinery of Simpy Mechanics uses. And then I could do b, v, r, diff, uh, with respect to t in the b frame, so that gives me that uh, relative acceleration term. Okay, if we sum all those pieces up, we'll get the acceleration of r and a, and then um, the nice thing too is that uh, if we create points, and do we create a point of r yet? We've got s and we've got q, but we need a point for r. R equals, sorry, R equals point, and then we're going to say R dot set position from S, and then we have that vector, S to R, yeah. Uh, now we can say R dot A one point theory. And if we look at the documentation for that, we're going to use the other point, and our case is going to be S. Outer frame is going to be A, and the frame that things are moving in, um, and then we have, and the point S is fixed in, is this last frame. So I think this is what will give me an error because. I'm not sure I have everything properly defined, but let's just go ahead and try it so we can see that. So we got uh, S, and then we're going to want it in A, and then uh, they're they're fixed in B, or they're moving the ones fixed in B. So it does give me error. Velocity of point R has not been defined in reference frame B. That's right. So we didn't, we don't have that, but we did calculate it. So we'll say R dot set velocity. And B is this B V R that we already calculated. And then if I run that again, key error A. Key error A, why did it give me that? So 
by doing the right frames are a1 point theory s a and b and that's sort of a cryptic error message velocity big frame i think i'm missing one of our velocities what velocity we Velocity of S in A is that there? S not velocity of A. That's probably not there. Oh yeah. So the velocity of S in A is not present. I'm guessing that's what it is. So let's we need that in the AG point theory. So set velocity in A, and that's zero. Right. And then boom, we calculate it. And do we get the same pieces? So here is our uh, relative velocity term. And then we've got these two terms here, um, the uh, tangential and the centripetal points. And then our um, uh, Coriolis is not present. So we've done the calculation proper and you can also use this a one point theory but you got to make sure that you have the correct position vectors and the velocities already set up for the prior point the points that are involved um, but this will apply uh, the correct theory and then um, you know even I don't know if this will probably fail because maybe I don't have all of the things but if I want the same thing s but now in uh, in B. Oh, there it goes. So this is going to give you the full acceleration of that point R, the pigeon, when uh, observed from N. And it has all of the terms, the Coriolis, the uh, tangential, etc., etc. Okay, so longest lecture yet hour and 27 minutes uh, my voice is worn out and that uh, should get you going though for calculating the three problems in the homework for uh, the coming period and uh, and then there's one more problem that will match up with the lecture after this okay see you next time